freedom. There's so many songs and poems and sayings about it, but what freedoms do we have and who protects them? Of course, there's a lot of answers to this question, but here I'd like to focus on Roosevelt's four freedoms and their protection all over the world. To tell this story, we have to go back to a time of very little freedom, 1941, when Nazi bombs were raining down on so many European countries. These countries saw that they were at risk of losing the war and called for the help of the United States. Now, the president of the US at the time was FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and he really wanted to help out. But the Americans at the time, with the First World War still in mind, really didn't feel like getting involved in this war in faraway Europe. What really changed the American mind, and this is of course quite special, is a speech. Um, it was the, what would become known as the Four Freedom Speech that Roosevelt held on the 6th of January 1941 to Congress. And in it he set out that what was at stake at this war, far away, was actually four fundamental freedoms everywhere in the world. He spoke about the freedom of expression as one of those freedoms, but also the freedom of every man to worship God in his own way. He spoke about the freedom from want, so that you shouldn't go hungry, and about the freedom from fear there in the middle of the war. It were these freedoms in Roosevelt's mind that were at stake in the war, and that, in his words, needed the supremacy of human rights everywhere. Now, of course, such ideas about rights and freedoms had been written up before, for instance, in many constitutions. But Roosevelt really put human rights forward as the aim of international cooperation, and this was really new. Well, this idea, because that's all that it was at the time, was further worked out in a very strange place, out at sea, outside Newfoundland, where the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Winston Churchill, would meet with Roosevelt in August 1941. And what they did was draw up what would become known as the Atlantic Charter, a charter in which they promised to after the war, work together for a peace that would assure that all the men in all the lands would live in freedom from fear and from want. So there we have those two freedoms again. This whole step from speech to charter was quite revolutionary and Churchill was quickly told off by his parliament for it. But the document also inspired people all over the world, especially those living in the colonies, such as a young law student in South Africa called Nelson Mandela. And in 1945, when the war was finished and the United Nations were formed in San Francisco, these United Nations did not only aim to strengthen peace and security, but also to work together to strengthen fundamental human rights. But how now to translate the four freedoms into something tangible, something that could really protect people against dictatorships? Here, Eleanor Roosevelt would play a key role. As Franklin's wife, or actually widow by then, she was what we would now call a social justice warrior who had always had a keen eye for people suffering all over the world, maybe because she just had such an unhappy childhood herself. Eleanor became the chair of the commission tasked to propose human rights that all member states could agree upon. Now, of course, this wasn't a really easy task. And what they did was send out a questionnaire to get input from all over the world. They got a letter from Mahatma Gandhi, for instance, from India, who wrote that he did not know much about rights at all, but that his mother had always taught him that duties were much more important. 
In spite of all these different ideas, on the 10th of December 1948, Eleanor Roosevelt presented the Universal Declaration of Human Rights to the United Nations, which adopted it without any country voting against. Quite special. The UN would thus not only formed, but they had also promised to work together to realize human rights. Of course, it takes time for these paper promises between countries to be worked out into rights that people could actually rely on. But this happened with general conventions, but also with a special European Convention on Human Rights, and also with conventions, treaties, in which the UN countries agreed that children and women and persons with disabilities had human rights as well, so that all people in all the lands could at least call in these papers. But to realize them, of course, you need people. They're the bridge between paper and practice. And this is why Every two years, very special people working in the spirit of Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt receive a Four Freedoms Award in Middelburg, in the Dutch province of Zeeland. Such an award has come to people like Malala, Angela Merkel, and to this man, Nelson Mandela, who led his country, South Africa, into freedom from apartheid. You know, Eleanor Roosevelt once said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Franklin Roosevelt dreamt about four freedoms, and he and everyone who followed in his footsteps made the world a better place because of it. This is why, in thinking about freedom, it might be interesting to also think about Roosevelt's four freedoms what they meant for the world and how each and every one of us can contribute to realizing them.